The real difference is that PERT is concerned with events, whereas CPM is concerned with activities. So with PERT, you have events drawn as circles, and they are connected by arrows. And the arrows are the activities. The arrows are what take the time, a bit like driving between cities. Whereas with CPM, it's about the activities. So with CPM, you put the times on the boxes, not on the arrows. With CPM, the arrows don't take any time. They just say what depends on what, what has to precede what. And with CPM, you draw them as rectangles. So really, if you're choosing between PERT and CPM, it depends whether you want to look at it from the customer's point of view. They usually prefer PERT because they want to know start and finish dates, milestones if you like. Or whether you want to look at it from the point of view of the person doing the work, in which case you want to use CPM and focus on the activities to be done. And in fact, the decision about whether you're using PERT or CPM is made much earlier when you're listing the tasks. Because if you list activities in a work breakdown structure, then you're going to end up using CPM. But if you list deliverables and you have a product breakdown structure, then you'll end up using PERT. By the way, personally, I much prefer CPM. That's what Microsoft Project uses. It's more intuitive, I think. You can use post-it notes to do it in a really easy, convenient way. And also, you always have activities to do, but you don't always have events. So the one snag with CPM is, yes, OK, it doesn't have milestones, but you can put them in at the Gantt chart stage anyway. And it's important to note that whether you use PERT or CPM, you're still going to convert it into a Gantt chart sooner or later, and the Gantt chart will be the output that you want. And just a final thing I don't like about the way that project management is taught in textbooks is that PERT and CPM are often shown as very complicated shapes with little subdivisions. And people do a forward pass and a backward pass, and they calculate the differences, the float, and all of that. But in reality, you don't need to do that. In reality, you just put the time on each arrow if it's PERT, or on each box if it's CPM, and just add them up. And it's easy enough to find the longest path. You just add up the longest path. You don't need to put all the times in little boxes. I know that's what computers do, but that doesn't mean that we as humans have to do it when we're adding up our post-it note diagram. Have a look at this one here. I think you'll see it's pretty obvious what the critical path is.